Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video you're going to learn how to play You Can Call Me Al, as recorded by Paul Simon on guitar. Now this song is off an incredible album called Graceland by Paul Simon. If you haven't heard it, make sure to go and check it out. In this video we're going to break down the guitar parts here for You Can Call Me Al. This is going to be an electric version, and we're going to focus on the triads here in the chorus, and Going to the verse, we're going to be playing some sixths with some funky rhythms. I'm going to break the whole song down for you top to bottom. But before we jump in, if you're new, I want to hook you up with a gift right away. I put together this awesome fretboard guide that's going to show you the five must-know chords and scales to play in any style anywhere on the neck. And it's going to tie in exactly with today's video. We'll be talking about these specific shapes, but higher up the neck. So it's going to help you put it all together and just learn how to basically map out the fretboard. And I want to give it to you completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide or use the first link down below. All right, well, with that said, let's dive into this song. Let's break down how to play You Can Call Me Al as recorded by Paul Simon on guitar. Now we're going to start off with the chorus and this main riff. It's just a two bar pattern that repeats over and over. We're going to use what are called triads, just some three note chords here for a really great electric part. Here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, four, one. All right, so I'm starting out here in the fifth position, and I'm going to be playing all of these chords on the fourth, third, and second strings. So just these three strings here. Now the first chord is what we call an F. It's an F over A. I'm playing the seventh fret, then the fifth fret, then the sixth fret there. So seven on the fourth string, and then just goes down from there. Seven, five, six. And I'm using ring, then index finger, then middle finger. Now, for those of you that are familiar with your caged chords, this is coming out of this shape here, which looks like your C chord here. But it's actually going to be an F chord. So it's just moved higher up the neck. So that's the first chord. Then we're going to go. These chord shapes here are just played with one finger. So I'm playing the fifth fret now and just barring three strings on the same strings, so fourth, third, and second strings. I'm going to do two strums there and then move down to the third fret with still that index finger and do one strum there. So this chord is a C and then this chord is a B flat. So we've got an F chord here, a C, and a B flat. And, and their full names, you know, with the bass notes are like F with the A as the bass, C with a G as the bass, and then B flat with F as the bass. So it's one strum here, two strums here, and then one strum here. Now our rhythm is very syncopated. This song has a really cool groove to it. I, I just love jamming along with it. And just every time it comes on, it has such a great energy. And the rhythm starts on beat two. One and two and three e and a. So that's this chord on beat two. Then we go to this chord on beat three. One and two and three. Then we're gonna have 16th notes. Three e and a. Three e and a. Ba, ba. It's just got that cool kind of syncopated groove to it. And then that's on the and of four. So one and two and three e and a four and. And then we do the same rhythm again. But instead of going to this chord, the B flat, we're going to trade that B flat out for just the first chord again, the F with the A in the bass. So. So the first time it walks down, then the next time it goes back to the first chord and it just cycles that around. And 
Now sometimes I'll do this. And I'll actually play right before that last chord, the F over A, what I'll do is I'll play that C shape on the fifth fret and then hammer down. And it's like a Keith Richards thing, right? <laughs> Very common chord progression. You see this in millions of songs. So that's the main riff. A couple more times, here it is. One, two, three, four, one. And really, it's like, ba 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 ba, ba 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 da. Those are the chords, you know, F, C, B flat, or really just the three chords, which is your one, four, and five, uh, one, four, and five in the key of F, right? So after that chorus, then we go to the verse, and here the guitar player plays these really cool, funky six, you know, just this shape where you put a string in between your your uh, your fingers, and I'll play it for you first, then we'll break it down. One, two, three, four. This is such a cool part here, and really it's just based around a few shapes here. So the first one is 10 and 10, and I'm playing all of these again here just on two strings now, the fourth string and then the second string. So we've got 10 and 10, then go to 8 and 8, then 7 and 6. Okay, that's the first measure. One and two E and a three and four and ba 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 ba. Then we do the same thing again, but instead of doing two here, we go down to five and five there. Then we do the first riff again. Then in the final bar we play. Okay, and that's just going up to eight and eight here, then seven and six, and then using those two shapes there. Three and four and... So the tricky part is being able to strum it. It's almost like practicing an octave shape where you have to work on really muting all the other strings. So I'm able to strum that and you're not gonna hear those open strings ringing out. One and two E and a three and four and one and two E and a three and four and one and two E and a three and four and one and two E and a three and four and. Okay, it does that twice. Here it is one more time. Then the guitar actually just lays out. You know, it's just bass and drums, and that's when Paul starts singing Bone Digger, Bone Digger, you know, Dogs in the Moonlight. If you wanted to play there, the chords are just F2, F2, 3, 4, then G minor, C, you know, Bone Digger, Bone Digger, Dogs in the Moonlight. Get these mutts away from me. Then. From there, you just go back to that main riff for the chorus. Congrats on making it through this lesson on how to play You Can Call Me Al, as recorded by Paul Simon on guitar. Now, those funky guitar parts are definitely rhythmically complex, so you want to just make sure you're doing a lot of listening, listening to the recording, and then start thinking about that groove. It's really 16th note based, you know, one hand, 
two E and a three E and a four E and just getting your strum hand to start doing that rhythm. And to help you even more with this song lesson and tie in those chord shapes, make sure to grab my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five must know chords and scales to play in any style anywhere on the neck. And as I was mentioning, as we were going through the lesson, I'm thinking about these bigger chord shapes that are really all tied back to our basic open chords. So it's really gonna help you put this together. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide or use the first link down below to grab your copy. Next, I wanna hear from you. Leave a comment down below and let me know what's your number one struggle with guitar right now that I could help you out with on the channel. Just comment it down below. Also, if you have any song requests, you can get those in down below as well. Thanks for your support here on the channel and we'll see you in another video real soon.